<laughs> Good evening, teacher. Finally, we are at the end. We are going to end this course today and we are going to end it with two different parts of different topics. Um, so we are going to finish this uh, course with uh, this uh, topic that is talking about tell and ask. We are going to talk about what is tell what is ask and what are the uses that we can give to those uh, words. But for the first thing that we're going to do is to listen a conversation because we're going to listen a conversation that we can find it in the platform. So we are going to begin with that part. And then we are going to explain what is the use of tell, what are the uses of ask, we are going to see some examples and then we are going to do an exercise at the last part. But in this case, it's not like uh, we are going to do it like the other exercises. In this case, we are going to see the exercise that you have on the platform that is the last exercise of the, se the section number five. We are going to read that information and we are going to see the answers because we are going to talk about something about that exercise that you have on the platform on the in the section number five. So we are going to begin with the conversation. So we are going to uh, listen at the conversation that is called, um, let me see. Can I take a message? Can I take a message? And we are going to see, or we are going to hear the conversation between two people that are talking on the phone. So. Let's begin with that part. One in the conversation we're about to hear two verbs very close in meaning will be used. Once you listen to the conversation, practice it as many times as possible. Good morning, Parker Industries. Hello, may I speak to Ms. Graham, please? I'm sorry, she's not in. Can I take a message? Yes, please. This is Mr. Kale. Is that G-A-L-E? No, it's K-A-L-E. All right. Please tell her our meeting is on Friday at 2.30. Friday at 2.30. And could you ask her to call me this afternoon? My number is 646-555-4031. 646-555-4031. Yes, Mr. Kale. I'll give Ms. Graham the message. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good morning, Parker Industries. Hello. May I speak to Ms. Graham, please? I'm sorry, she's not in. Can I take a message? Yes, please. This is Mr. Kale. Is that G-A-L-E? No, it's K-A-L-E. All right. Please tell her our meeting is on Friday at 2.30. Friday at 2.30. And could you ask her to call me this afternoon? My number is 646-555-4031. 646 555-4031. Yes, Mr. Kale. I'll give Ms. Graham the message. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. So here we have the conversation and you can hear and also you can read the information they are sharing to each other. So in this case, we have the secretary and we have Mr. Kale. And in this case, Mr. Kale wants to talk about with Mrs. Graham, Graham but she is not in the office. So we uh, are going to um, read again some uh, phrases, but in this case, we're just going to read the phrases that have tell or ask. So in this case, we have, um, hmm, uh, please tell her our meeting is on Friday at 2.30. Please tell her our meeting 
is on Friday at 2.30. En esa oración donde le dice, por favor, dígale que nuestra reunión es el viernes a las 2.30. We have the word tell, es decirle, es expresarle, es recordarle eh, que tienen una reunión. Es volverle a decir, ¿verdad? Porque ya sabe ella que tiene una reunión, pero en este caso quiere que le vuelva a decir que van a tener una reunión el viernes. Then, we have another eh, sentence, and in this case it says, And could you ask her to call me this afternoon? My number is 646-555-4031. En ese caso, and could you ask her, le podría preguntar, le podría pedir que me llame esta tarde. En ese caso, eh, tell me, Fatima. Teacher, entonces estaba viendo que el cero en inglés se puede decir de dos formas. Sí, en este caso. Eh, cuando sí, tiene... porque generalmente es eh, zero, eh, lo, lo que sí. nos han enseñado. Sí, en este caso, cuando ustedes hablen de los números en general, usted va a decir zero, porque ese es el, el nombre del, del número. Pero cuando uh -huh. usted esté dando un número de teléfono, en este caso, cuando esté hablando de un número de teléfono, que también tiene que decirlo número por número, va a decir O oh, para evitar confusiones. Oh. Por eso en los números de teléfono se dice O, oh, pero en los números en general se dice zero. Mm, okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, in this case, tell is to express something that we have in our mind. And as is for like uh, having an answer or Uh, doing something or uh, we can say asking the people to do something for us and in that case we have just those two examples of tell and ask and now let's see give me one moment please because I'm taking this out and I'm charging the other one So this one is not charging in the good way, but. Okay, I think it is. So we're going to talk about the difference between tell and ask. Así que ahora vamos a ver cuáles son las diferencias de tell and ask. And maybe we can say, oh, they are very easy words. And I know the meaning because tell is in Spanish is decir and ask is preguntar. But in this case, we are going to see or we are going to learn more information about tell and ask. And they have a lot, a lot of information about those words. Tenemos mucha, mucha información sobre tell and ask. Y no simplemente decir, ah, el tell sirve para esto y el ask para esto. They have like very specific information. And now we are going to see what are those uses that we can give to the verb uh, tell And the word ask or something like that. So we're going to begin with the question, what is ask in reality? Ask is a very simple word, which means to ask for something. It's used when you want someone to do something for you or give you information. Aquí tenemos primero que es ask. O cuál es el significado o la connotación que le podemos dar al ask. Y dice que es una palabra bastante simple. Obviously, it is very, very simple. ¿Qué significa preguntar por algo o pedir por algo? Y es utilizado cuando nosotros queremos hacer algo o, o queremos que alguien haga algo por nosotros o nos dé información. So in that case, ask is for uh, letting people know that we want to or we want a day to do something for us, uh, or we want some information, some specific information. So I'm going to write the information and we're going to continue with the explanation of 
the words ask and tell. So let's begin with this one. So we were talking about ask, but also we are talking about tell. And in this case, it says that tell is a more complicated word, which means to tell someone something. It is used uh, when you want to explain something or give information. In este caso, dice que es un poco más complicado hablar de tell, porque esta palabra significa que alguien um, necesita hablar o decir algo. Y se utiliza cuando nosotros queremos explicar algo o dar información. In that case, a tale is more like complex in this case, because um, we use that expression to express, explain, give information, um, just talk to someone and give some details about the things that we want to say. But we're going to see. Uh, why is more complicated to use a tell than ask? And the more information that I have for you. In this case, we have the question, what is ask? But also we have the question, what is tell? And it says that tell is a verb meaning to communicate information to someone. Ask is a noun meaning a request for information, usually made in an informal setting. So in this case, we have some elements that we need to, um, to know here. In this case, tell is for communicate something. And ask is for a request. Tell is for communicating and um, ask is for requesting someone, some, some information. And usually, um, ask is made or is used in an informal setting. Así que tenemos que tell, el significado de tell es comunicar alguna información a alguien. Y la palabra ask es para pedir información. Y usualmente se hace en un, eh, en un lugar informal o de una forma más informal ¿Cómo lo haríamos con eh, tell? Teacher, una pregunta. Eh, yo estoy muy acostumbrado a la traducción. Eh, prácticamente, ¿cuál sería la traducción de as? Preguntar. La, la, la traducción, la primera traducción que nosotros tenemos es pregunta o preguntar. 
pero según el contexto, ahí van cambiando. Acuérdense que esto cambia según la forma en la que lo usamos. Básicamente. Sí, porque, perdón, prácticamente más que todo se oye nada más en como cuando hacemos preguntas para preguntar información, pero así como el, el, el texto acá sí me sonó un poquito complicado. Sí, porque en este caso no simplemente vamos a hacer una pregunta, sino que en este caso estamos pidiendo. Can you ask, uh, can you ask for, or I am asking for uh, some details. Estoy pidiendo por más detalles. En este caso no es que en realidad nosotros pidamos, sino que estamos preguntando por detalles, pero también le podemos dar esa traducción de, eh, de pedir. Porque como aquí dice request, nosotros pedimos que se nos dé información. No simplemente I am asking you a question. Te estoy preguntando, literalmente lo redondeamos y le decimos de nuevo, le estoy preguntando una pregunta. But in this case, I am, eh, we can change that. Preguntar una pregunta por estoy haciéndole una pregunta. So in this case, it's like eh, the, the different ways in which we can express an idea. And in this case, we can like use the same words But based on the context, we can uh, make like a different meaning. And in this case, we can say that they are like synonyms. Son como sinónimos que nosotros le podemos agregar a las palabras. O sea, en este caso no simplemente vamos a decir pregunta, sino pedir o hacer una, un request de información. Okay, I got it. Okay. Then it says there is a very meaning. So here we have in this case that uh, some examples of uh, things that we can do with, with tell and with ask. And for tell, we have telling someone your opinion. That is something very uh, normal to do when we are using the word tell. Then sharing news and giving advice. And for us, we might use Uh, ask for a request information or for requesting information to ask a question that is the normal thing that we know uh, we can do with ask and to make an order. Aquí es donde vemos la, las diferentes cosas que podemos hacer nosotros con 
dos simples palabras que a veces nosotros eh, solo las utilizamos para una sola función. En este caso, para tell, vamos a, a utilizarlo para decirle a alguien nuestra opinión personal, que es bastante acertado lo que nosotros hacemos con tell, de decir, de explicar. Sharing news es eh, compartir noticias, compartir nueva información, compartir algo nuevo. Y para dar consejos, también vamos a utilizar tell para dar consejos a otros. Para ask, el primero es para pedir información, para eh, hacer una pregunta, lo que les decía de preguntar una pregunta, en ese caso es hacer una pregunta. Y lo último es para hacer o pedir una orden en un restaurante, podemos decirlo. So in this case, we can use it for different situations and for different uh, activities or things that we are going to do in our daily life. So imagine that we have just two short words and we say, ah, they are very simple, but at this moment you are like seeing a, a lot of information about those two words. And in this case, we can notice that in English, it's kind of complex, the use of some words, because um, in that case, they have like different uses. And also we can change the original use that we have for this word, depending on the context and the way we use that word. So how to ask questions? In this case, we are using ask, but in this case, we can have a tell and ask for questions. And we are going to see like when to ask some question and we are going to see some examples. So let's see what is this, how to ask question. We're going to see what is this. So in this case, uh, we are saying that, what is the purpose of making questions with tell and ask? And in this case, when you are using ask or you are uh, asking questions, you need to get information. You need information that is the, the base thing that you are going to do with ask. But also you are asking for understanding. You need people to understand what is your point in this case. And also you are asking for support in a decision, in a new job or something like that. And when you are using tell, you are telling people what you need and what you want. So in that case, you are expressing your desires to. And we have when to ask questions. When you don't know what to do or how to do something,
So we have four different moments in which we are going to ask questions. So in this case, we are talking about ask. The first one is when you don't know what to do or how to do something. Number two, when you need clarification on something, you just learn. Three, when you want to understand a person or object better. And number four, when you want someone's opinion. En estos casos es que nosotros vamos a utilizar el ask o preguntar ciertas, eh, cierto tipo de preguntas porque primero no sabemos qué hacer o no sabemos cómo hacer algo y ahí es donde nosotros hacemos preguntas para obtener esa información que necesitamos. Dos, cuando necesitamos un aclarar algo que acabamos de, de aprender y que no estamos 100% seguros de que sea de esa forma. Entonces, necesitamos que nos aclaren ciertos puntos. Número tres, cuando quieren entender a una persona o a un objeto mejor. O sea, quieren entenderlo mejor para saber ya sea su funcionamiento o el comportamiento de esa persona. Y por último, cuando quieren la opinión de alguien sobre alguna situación de su vida. Now, we see here the ask, and now we are going to tell, uh, talk about tell. And in this case, we have how to tell if you should tell someone something. ¿Cómo decir que ustedes necesitan decirle algo a alguien? So in this case, we are going to think about uh, that situation. And it says that there is a big difference asking someone questions and telling them things Sometimes it can be difficult to know which opinion to take. And here is a breakdown of the different type of communication. En este caso, preguntar es simplemente decirle a la persona eh, o hacerle la pregunta a la persona para obtener una información. Pero decirle, o sea, usando tell, es... Eh, Diferente porque ahí estamos expresando nuestras ideas, no estamos pidiendo una opinión, sino que estamos expresando nuestras ideas y a veces cuando decimos es diferente, es, es difícil saber una opinión porque solo estamos diciendo, no estamos preguntando por una opinión. Entonces en ese caso a veces no vamos a encontrar feedback de lo que nosotros estamos diciendo. In this case, ask is the most common form of communication. You ask somebody a question and you expect them to answer it. For example, you might say, can you help me with this project? This is a valid ask because the person receiving the request has been given the opportunity to say no. En este caso, eh, preguntar o utilizar las preguntas es una de las formas más básicas de comunicación porque estamos esperando una respuesta de alguien. Eh, así como dice el ejemplo, can you help me with this project? ¿Me puedes ayudar con este proyecto? ¿Qué estoy haciendo yo con esa pregunta? Le estoy dando información a la persona, pero al mismo tiempo le estoy dando tiempo de que piense la respuesta, de que me diga sí o no me puede ayudar con mi proyecto. Then, we tell, this type of communication involves telling somebody something without asking first. For example, you might say, I'm going to bed now, but I need you to do something for me. This type of a statement is not a request, it is a demand. En ese caso, yo no le estoy preguntando a la persona. Le estoy demandando. Porque dice, me voy a la cama ahora, pero necesito que hagas algo por mí. In that case, I am not asking anything. I am not telling, can you please help me with something? In that case, I am I'm just saying, you are going to do it, and I am not asking you if you want. So in that case, it is a demand. And we are going to see difference between question with ask and phrases with tell. Vamos a ver algunas diferencias que podemos notar cuando utilizamos el ask y el tell. En el ask, vamos a hacerlo más que todo como eh, pregunta. Y el otro sería igual. Vamos a tener como preguntas y frases para ver la diferencia. Let's see. What are the difference between the use of tell and ask in some uh, statements?
So let's see, and can we separate uh, the phrases? So we are going to see what are the difference. If you can uh, see in the phrase that we have with ask, what did you do that? We are asking someone reasons why, but in the phrase, I told you to do that. I told you to do that. In that case, you are not like asking for something. You are telling that person that you demand to do something. And in the second one, I did that because I told you to. En la primera es una pregunta. Estamos tratando de encontrar la razón del por qué hizo eso. What did you do that? ¿Por qué lo hiciste? And I am giving you time to express your ideas. To tell me, ah, I did it because I wanted to do it or because I feel like this was the, the best thing to do or something like that. And we tell, te dije que lo hicieras. No le estoy preguntando, no le estoy pidiendo permiso, ni siquiera estoy siendo amable. Simplemente le dije que lo hiciera y ya. Y en el segundo, I did that because I told you to. Lo hice porque yo te dije que lo iba a hacer. Y eso es todo. No le estamos eh, pidiendo que nos responda, no le estamos pidiendo que nos eh, explique, sino que simplemente le estamos diciendo que lo hicimos y ya. En el segundo, would you like me to do that? Would you like me to do that? What are your thoughts on this? En la primera, ¿te gustaría que yo lo hiciera? Estamos pidiendo eh, que nos digan o nos aclaren si les gustaría que eh, nosotros hiciéramos alguna acción. Y en la segunda, ¿cuáles son tus pensamientos de esto? What do you think about this situation? Can you please give me some information about that? Or can you please give me some advices or something like that? And in the, in the last one, this is a suggestion. Esta es una sugerencia. But I am not asking you if you want me to tell you this suggestion. I am just talking about the things that I want to say. So it's very, very different because in one of these, you are asking for something. You need some information. And with the second one, you are just explaining. You are just giving your uh, your information to the others, but you are not asking feedback. You are not uh, you are not asking for more information, and also you are not asking um, for uh, advisors or something like that because you are just expressing yourself. So we can say that the main or the big difference between chill and ask is that with uh, us you are um, giving time to the people to to think about the, the answers and to think about the things that you want to know, but with tell you are not giving any time to anyone because you are just expressing your ideas and your thoughts and you are not um, asking for information or for more information because in this case, you need to talk about that situation and that's it. So in that case, it's like, demanding something but you are not asking for um, information you are not asking for anything así que podemos decir que una de las grandes diferencias que hay entre ask y tell es que con una nosotros le vamos a dar tiempo a la persona de que piense una respuesta ya sea una respuesta negativa una respuesta positiva y con el otro simplemente vamos a dar toda la información que nosotros tenemos pero no le vamos a dar tiempo a la persona de que lo asimile, sino que simplemente lo vamos a decir y ya está. Y ese es el propósito de tell. Just express ideas and thoughts. That's it. That's the main point. And for the conclusion, we have two statements. Just two statements. And then we're going to see the structure because we have an structure for this one. And then we are going to read the, uh, the exercise that we have on the platform. So we're going to see the conclusion.
So in the conclusion, we have two different things about the ask and tell. And for ask, we have question that solicit feedback, such as what do you think? Or how would you solve this problem? Lo mismo, en este caso estamos pidiendo, estamos solicitando un feedback que es que nos den a nosotros como, um, how can we say it like, que nos digan nosotros que lo que estamos haciendo eh, es una retroalimentación. Yes, of course. Que nos diga a nosotros si estamos haciendo bien las cosas o no. Eh, que nos eh, dé la pauta para entender si esa es la solución o no. And for that reason, we have those questions. What do you think? It's good. It's not good. I have to do something else. Uh, what is the solution for that? So in that case, it's, it's soliciting uh, feedback uh, to our actions. And we tell there are statements. These not are questions. There are statements or facts or recommendation such as, this is what I did and it worked for me or don't forget to do. And we can add the action. En este caso son simplemente oraciones o recomendaciones que le podemos dar a los demás. Eso es lo que yo hice y a mí me funcionó. Te puede funcionar a ti. But I am not asking you um, at the end if it's going to, to be the best option for you. So in this case, I just give my recommendation and that, that is all the thing that you need to know. So. For the last thing to the bird tell and ask, we're going to see like the uh, structure that we're going to use for those and something to remember. Solo vamos a ver las estructuras y algo que recordar sobre ask and tell, and then we are going to read the exercise. So let's see. Because in this case, we are talking about that messages or giving messages when you are like uh, talking with someone else. So we're going to see the structures. So in this case, we have the rule for forming messages with a statement. In this case, it's when you are going to give a message to someone and you can say, tell, mm, tell Mary, I need her to call me to my cell phone. And we have that in parentheses because in that case, we are not going to use it in all of the sentence that we are going to have. Sometimes we use that a lot of times but in this case you can omit that word and you can use the statement en este caso tenemos el that entre paréntesis porque eh, podemos omitirlo no es una parte esencial de la oración y podemos saltar esa parte y solo decir bueno yo necesito esto esto y esto tell mary to call me díganle a mary que me llame o tell mary that she needs to call me or tell Mary, uh, I need her to call me. That I need or just I need. En ese caso podemos omitir el that. En ese, en, no es necesario que lo agreguemos. And in this case, remember. Remember, you need to sound polite. When you need to sound polite, you need to use please. Could you, would you. Cuando queremos sonar bastante respetuoso, ¿verdad? Con alguien que no conocemos, podemos utilizar please, could you, or would you.
So there we have some examples. Please tell Juan at that, or please tell Juan the class is at five. And could you tell Juan that the class is at five? And then we are going to have the uh, structure for ask. And in this case, we have ask plus the person plus two plus the request. And we are going to see some examples for that. And the first one we have, please ask Lucia to meet me at my office. And the last one, could you ask Lucia to meet me in my office? So in that case, we have uh, here all the information that we can have about the bear ask and tell and we see that we have a lot of information for those um, very short words but that is uh, the thing with the english language they have a lot of things to do with some words in this case um, they have like different meanings depending on the context and all other things así que eh, sabemos que en inglés es totalmente diferente porque se les da muchos otros usos a las palabras y pues dependiendo del contexto de lo que nosotros queramos expresar y cosas así. Now, give me some I think some seconds because I'm going to the platform because we are going to read the um, the article that we have there and I'm going to explain you something. Yo creo que ya todos terminaron. ¿Cree que habrá alguien que no haya terminado? Que diga, hable ahora o que cae para siempre. <risas> que por cierto, este tema que estamos viendo ahorita fue el que, bueno, a mí el que más me dio dolor de cabeza en la plataforma. Yes, but me I think, too. tell me. Me too. Yes, because you know that sometimes we have an idea about the these kind of topics and at the end we have more things to know. But in this case, I know that I think and I hope all of you have finished the work on the platform uh, because today is the last day. Uh, but in this case, it is not, we are going to do this exercise not for uh, for making uh, the information of, or something like that. In this case, it's because we need to know something about um, a specific, uh, we can say tool, because this is a, a skill. Vamos a hablar de, un, de una habilidad in this case. It is not just to base on the exercise, it's based on the skill. Because in this case, we are talking about summarizing and recognizing point of view. When we are reading, and I know that maybe, I don't know it is your case, but I know that in some uh, cases, reading is one of the worst thing in the world. Because I know people that they don't like to read and they say, why I need to read that, it's kind of boring. And I know that maybe many people can find uh, books boring because they are not like, or they don't find that, um, that situation very uh, pleasant. But I know that there are more people that really like to read and they find it like very easy. But in this case, when you are um, 
learning English, you need to, to develop some skills to um, gain time when you are uh, doing some exercises. En el caso de nosotros que estamos aprendiendo inglés, eh, siempre se nos da una situación que eh, tenemos algún ejercicio que tiene que ver con leer y se nos pone un artículo, se nos pone eh, una parte de, de un eh, artículo científico en muchos de los casos y necesitamos encontrar información en poco tiempo. En hay I don't think that you consider that it is necessary to read the whole thing to find the information. But in this case, we are going to use some skills that we need to develop, um, not just in English, but also in Spanish. That is summarizing. Es como hacer un, un resumen, es resumir todo lo que nosotros leímos y sacar lo más importante. Y también reconocer el punto de vista de la persona que está expresándose. En este caso, eh, we didn't um, see the other skills that we can uh, develop in, in English when we are reading, because we have like uh, different skills in which you are just going to find the uh, specific information that you need for your uh, questions. Um, that is uh, skimming, uh, scanning, and all of that things. But I think you are going to, to see that information in the future, porque hay muchas, muchas habilidades que nosotros podemos desarrollar cuando leemos y ganamos mucho tiempo al hacerlas, como en el scanning, que es hacer un escáner del de artículo completo para encontrar la información que necesitamos, el skimming, que es saltarnos, ¿verdad? De, de, de frase en frase hasta encontrar... Eh, la frase que necesitamos. Pero en este caso solo es desarrollar, summarizing and recognizing point of view. So we are going to read the uh, paragraph and we are going to uh, answer the, the things that we have in the platform. And you already did. So this is very easy for you. But we are going to do it like slow. So in this case, we have an, an article And we, um, in this case, it is asking us to try to understand the point of view of the writer. And in your case, you need to choose the ideas that you think the writer may agree. And they have four options. So we're going to read the information and we're going to see the point of view of the option that you had in the platform. So let me. Do it like this. And I will share the screen with you because I'm going to read it. So this is the last exercise that you have in the platform that all of you have completed. But this one is a cell phone etiquette. So we are talking about um, the cell phone. What do you do in a situation like this? You are eating dinner with friends and an at a nice restaurant, you're having a great time when a phone rings at the table next to you. A man takes out his phone and starts talking loudly about problems he's having with his girlfriend. He talks for almost 10 minutes. This happens all the time, on buses, restaurants, everywhere. Many people find a cell phone useful in their day-to-day -day lives, but We have all sat next to someone talking too loudly on a cell phone. You may want to tell the loud mouth to end the conversation. But let the management take care of noisy customers. You can only control your own behavior. Here are for a few rules. Of mean, of means of. Respect the rules of restaurants and other public places. If a sign says, turn off cell phone, don't use your phone. Keep private conversation private. Speak softly and for a short time. Try to move away from other people. Lights off, phone off. Never take calls in a theater or at the movies. Pay attention. Talking on a cell phone um, while driving is dangerous and watch 
where you are going when you are uh, walking down the street and talking to the phone. As more people use cell phone, things are only going to get worse. So the next time you are getting ready to make a call, stop and consider the people around you. So in this case, we're talking about like people that like to talk uh, in a loud voice when they are in a, a private spaces or a closed spaces. And many people find it like very um, bad thing because we don't want to hear people talking on the phone, talking about the problems and all of that things. But in this case, we have this one that is the statement that we have here. And check the statement the writer will probably agree with. And we have different statements. And we have number one, you should never use a cell phone in public. Cell phones users are very rude people. Turn off your cell phone if someone asks you to. You should challenge people who talk loudly on cell phones. It is okay to talk on the phone while driving a car. You can use a cell phone in public if you speak quietly. Don't shout into the phone and don't stand close to the other people when you are using the cell phone. So for this case, we have four possible answers. What are the four possible answers that you choose for this exercise? ¿Cuáles fueron las, las respuestas de este ejercicio? Can you tell me just number the number? Three. Don't worry. The, uh, number, number three. Number three. Number six. Number six. Number seven. Number seven. And the last one? Number eight. Good. Number eight. So, the uh, phrases, turn off your cell phone if someone asks you to, because in that case, there are telling you a lot of times that you are not going to use your cell phone in that kind of situation. Number six, you can use a cell phone in public if you speak quietly. It is not like you're not going to use it, but you need to do it in a loud voice. Number seven, don't shout into the phone. It's not like you are going to change anything if you shoot on the phone. And the last one, don't stand close to the other people when you are using a cell phone. So you need to take your space and you are not going to like have this kind of situation with other people. So that is the last part for this session because we are at the end. So I just want to tell you, thank you for your time. You are doing a great, great job. You did very well in this course. So remember that you need to work with uh, the things that you have and you are going to complete all the things that you need to do. If you have a goal, you need to work on that goal and you are going to complete all the things that you are going to do in your life. So thank you for your time and this is the end. So have a really good night and good luck for the other model that you are going to have in the future. Thank you so much. Teacher, voy a mandar el documento actualizado. Yes, lo voy a volver a mandar. Thank you, teacher. Thanks for your time, teacher. too. Have a really good time. Thanks, teacher. You're welcome. Bye. See you again. Bye, guys. See you again.